Welcome to Single Step English, the YouTube channel that takes language learning one step at a time. I'm your host, Steve, and on this channel, we interview language teaching professionals from all over the world. These videos will help you learn tips, tricks, and strategies to achieve fluency. Join us on our journey to become multilingual. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve. Welcome to Single Step English. In this first of many series, I hope, uh, this will be our first language teacher interview, and I'm very honored to have Kevin Ryan with us today. Good morning, Kevin. Hi, Steve. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Kevin, could you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? I know you have a long history of teaching English, and you've taught in Spain and Japan, so a little bit more information for our viewers. Thanks. I grew up in Chicago and then went to school in Indiana and then went to Barcelona where I began teaching mm -hmm. and then uh, to back to Chicago for graduate school and then over to Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one year, uh, after a few years, I went to China and worked in China for a year okay. and came back to Japan where I have been for a long, long time. Right. I uh, the t the country I've lived in most is Japan. I teach English at uh, university, mm -hmm. but I also teach technology. Uh, I'm the tech guy in the English department, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy doing that kind of thing as well. I just retired actually, so mm -hmm. I've been teaching now for almost forty years. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know it was that long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, congratulations on your retirement. It's uh, it's interesting. I'm still teaching part time, which is nice to be able to use these tools that I get to discover mm -hmm. and, and find. And that's an important part of the process. Okay. So when I do finish teaching, that will take out a lot of the ability to uh, to learn about new tools. So I'm still excited about that. Okay. I like new things. Yes, clearly. <laughs> uh, well, Kevin, I. I've obviously appreciated all the contributions you've made about learning and technology on different uh, Facebook groups, and it's been helpful for me. So that's really the main reason I wanted to have you on as a guest to talk about that today. Uh, and the first question I have is, uh, there's so much talk these days about chat GPT and AI and maybe you could just give us a summary of your thoughts on the technology and how it can help language learners and also teachers and maybe some of the positives and perhaps negatives. Well, chat GPT or just GPT in general mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a, a nice, it's a tool. And if you can look at it as a tool, you can get it to, if you can master it, you can get it to do lots of things to make your life easier. Uh, and that, I think, eventually, uh, after people get very excited about it, uh, it will turn out to be not that re revolutionary. Um, we have actually already uh, have been in the era of AI. Uh, if you've used a grammar checker, uh, that is kind of the precursor. And so if you think of chat GPT as a, a spell checker or grammar checker, but able to actually tell you about your mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, that one of the best things I discovered just this week uh, was that now chat GPT with an extra software, you can make it uh, have a conversation by speaking and listening. Uh, it's called voice uh, voice something is a, is a tool that you add in to your uh, browser and then you go into chat gpt and instead of typing your questions you can just ask the question and it will give an answer and the neat thing about that is well it could be scary it could be neat the neat thing about this you can tell uh the uh chat gpt to converse with you in any language Wow. Uh, almost any language. Mm -hmm. So I, for example, went in and have it, had it teach me some Japanese mm -hmm. or have a conversation in Japanese. And then it uh, comes back and it can explain about your mistakes. Mm 
mm. even when you're speaking right away and and it can uh, continue a conversation. And that, I think, the best thing about the tool is, and it's just a very simple tool, it predicts the next word, what is what most people will say for the next word. And so, again, it's like a grammar checker, but that can talk. Mm. And it's, uh, for example, one of my favorite things to do is to do what's called uh branching stories okay what's that uh, branching story or uh as kids when i was a kid we had these books called choose your own adventure right i remember those. Uh, mm. there's a series by uh, uh atami uh yeah. publisher they, they right. do uh for yeah. efl and so yeah. you start out and then you say you know choose a b or c mm -hmm. well you can get chat gpt to say okay let's start a story we're in space and there's two of us and we're approaching a new planet. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what are three options? And then chat GPT will come out with A, B, and C. And you mm -hmm. say, okay, let's choose option B mm -hmm. and uh, let's continue the story. Mm -hmm. So that you can actually kind of uh, work with chat GPT to make a new story. Mm -hmm. And that's creative is is you know to be able to create and that is the best thing that chat gpt can do mm. it can also do many many other things uh, it can help you to uh, well write new materials for teachers but mm. also for students to check and if you want to work a little bit more in a certain area to get more background with vocabulary or or, or grammar or things like that mm. you can ask chat gpt to be a kind of a, a tutor for you right yeah, I, I, as you're saying that, I was thinking in the future, it would be great if chat GPT, if you had your own login or information, it recorded your mistakes. And then maybe at the end of the week, it gave you a summary of your common mistakes. And it would allow you to review that. And even you could create your own quiz and say, please make a quiz of my mistakes. Right. Then as a language learner, you're empowered saying, oh, it's it's focusing on my weak points and I can correct those. Mm. Yes, and the nice thing about uh, GBT is the company OpenAI mm -hmm. that is no longer open. There is still there; it's not for free. Right. Eventually, you'll have to pay money. But right. companies will be able to license that ability and uh, harness it and put it in. So I I expect that uh, Oxford and Cambridge and Pearson and and even so, smaller publishers. I keep on press. Right. For example, yes. you'll be able to put in, you know, you'll be able to have an engine that your uh, book is business related and finance right. related. Mm -hmm. You can get now special packages of GPT that are able to right. converse with that. And you can teach it to use simple English, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, two or three years down the road, mm -hmm. you'll, uh, as a publisher, will be able to use that. And if you don't use it, you'll be out of business. <laughs> okay. Well said. All right, let's move on to a second question. Uh, what are some new tech tools that you've seen over the last year or two that you feel are useful and valuable for language learners and teachers and maybe others that we might want to avoid? Okay, there's um, so many different kind of waves of different kinds of tech coming at us mm -hmm. that uh, it's, um, how do you say it? The some tech tools uh let's go back a little bit 10 or 15 years uh, okay. 12 years i think it was and uh this uh this new tool called uh uh, uh youtube came out uh sure. where everybody was i've heard of it. it and there was this guy named sam khan uh mm -hmm. who, who made the khan academy and he was teaching right. using youtube mm -hmm. to teach algebra and okay. and things like that and, and this was whole and that year, the MOOCs came out as well, uh, mm -hmm. where people would study online in huge classes with 3,000 or 4,000 or 100,000 students, those two things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a big wave. And people were going to say, oh, traditional teaching is going to go by the wayside. It's going to finish. Mm -hmm. What we got in the end with that was uh, what we call flipped classes. A flipped class is when a teacher gets the student to either watch a video or read a reading 
or uh, do that beforehand. And then in class, instead of doing the lecture, mm. that the students do activities where they use that language to converse or interact uh, with each other and with the teacher mm. as well. So that uh, it uses the time more beneficially uh, mm. so that the students do individual things. We used to call it homework, but it's kind of homework that is goes before instead of after. Mm. And so that homework is to prepare for the next class. Mm. And if you can leverage that and use uh, technology like a uh, learning management system, uh, mm. I use Moodle, but there is Con Canvas and Google some Classroom. Other, and Google, yeah, the, sure. those kind of things. That really helps out with that this kind of flipped uh, approach where you get uh, – students to and if you can get the students to actually create the materials to right. build the class right. or in combination with a textbook to do supplementary materials to add on and say okay we've got this unit about banking mm -hmm. let's go look at some simple youtube videos about banking or you choose one mm -hmm. and then have them create a quiz and uh, do a summary and actually have them teach uh, about that uh, and get them more involved. Right. Um, so this is no specific technology. These are kind of teaching techniques, but uh, okay. there are some specific technologies coming down. For example, blockchain. Sure. Blockchain is the basis of what we call cryptocurrency. Mm. And cryptocurrency is, you know, a way, basically it's a way, it's like a big, huge, spreadsheet okay. like uh, Excel or Google Sheets or something mm -hmm. like. But the thing is that it's open and everyone can add information to that spreadsheet, but everyone has their own copy that is immediately updated mm -hmm. so that you can't cheat. Uh, there's no, well, <laughs> within the, the system, there's no way to cheat. Now we've seen Sam Bankman freed and, and mm -hmm. this whole cryptocurrency problem last year has kind of pointed out that there are other ways to cheat with it, but it's right. not with the system. Mm -hmm. Now, blockchain is a wonderful technology. It's a great way for teachers to be able to share material directly with students and even charge for those materials. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good way. The best thing is to use it like what we call badges. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a grading system. Uh, a rating system that is what's called portable, where you can bring it around. So it's not attached to any one university or school or, mm -hmm. or business or anything like that, that you are uh, carrying it around with your, yourself. And you can share that with other, other people as you like, and you have control over that. Now, mm -hmm. that's a wonderful system, but it's not one, I think, that is very interesting for teachers. Uh, and okay. I don't think it really helps teaching or pedagogy very much. In it does help for administration, mm -hmm. and so if you're a school administrator, you might want to look into that, uh, or even a, a, a country uh, what might go to a blockchain system. But teacher is not so interesting. Okay, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about uh, you know language learning tools. Are we at the point where a student could write a paragraph? and submit it to some AI bot or some site, and it would check for grammar mistakes or offer suggestions? Yes, yes, um, ChatGPT does that. So uh, ChatGPT, like the student could write? Yes. Yeah, so what, now, then, as a teacher, we assign uh, the, we make the assignment, Kevin. Yes. And they run it through ChatGPT or any GPT. Mm. What what is our responsibility? What's our how do we grade? Okay, it? Yes, how, how do you fit into that? That is right. a good question. And the problem, well, it's not a problem. It's it's actually a, a a benefit. It's a it's not a bug. It's a feature. Okay, uh, what we say is something that is built into it is that it's individualized. And as a teacher of a large class, that means that you can maybe have more work uh, because you're. It's like what we say, herding cats, uh, where you have a cat and you have 26 all, yeah. cats running around the room trying to get them all. So it's all individualized, which is a, a 
if you're able to manage that as a teacher, right. I think it's a wonderful benefit. If you're not quite ready for that kind of thing, if you want to do a little bit more structured, there are uh, places that give, uh, how do you say, it? give uh, recommendations for writing. And, and for example, uh, Cambridge has, it's called Write and Improve. Okay. Where you can submit, uh, you can submit your paper and it will give you a Sefer level and it wow. will give you feedback, and then you can make new versions, and it's free uh, for the basic user. And you can, if you do uh, get some, pay some extra money, you can, as a teacher, mm. you can manage all of those things. Most of these tools uh, are available for individual users for free. Okay. Uh, but if you want to manage uh, classes, then you usually have to pay some extra money for the uh, accounting and grading system that goes on top of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I'd like to move on to question three, and that is uh, what can language learners and teachers do to understand more about technology and education? Where can they go? Are there any specific sites or I don't know, tools that you would recommend? Well, uh, to find information, yes. Um, it's important to kind of get your radar going okay. uh, to treat technology more like weather so that you've got your the place that you go every day for weather. Mm. You need to create kind of create a place to where you get information. Now, okay. this can be a, a really, really general level and just watch the news or, or whatever is coming up uh, and carefully and kind of filter out the stuff so that you can read those later or assemble. Just kind of pay more attention. Do those mm -hmm. kind of things so that uh, then you can actually set it up to search what i do i use what's called rss and uh, what's called a feed reader okay uh, rss is a system and it's kind of it's old it's about 20 years old and uh, or even longer but basically it takes all of the blogs that you're interested in you know a blog there's lots of people blogging about every topic. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> you can kind of collect all of those blogs together into one software. And then every time a blogger updates and adds a new post, mm -hmm. then it comes up in what's called your feed. It's kind of your, mm -hmm. your news. So it's kind of like a newspaper, a news magazine, but you create all of the content by choosing the blogs. And so there's a guy, for example, Stephen Downs mm -hmm. is my favorite blogger about technology in education. Okay. And he has, he posts maybe five or six uh, articles a day, and he kind wow. of recommends other things to read about mm -hmm. IT. Mm -hmm. And there's, I have, you know, half a dozen uh, other uh, guys that make blogs about this. And so I just kind of get all of those together. And uh, and I I might read twenty or thirty uh, blog posts every day uh, mm -hmm. about that, and, and it, you skip over most of those. Mm -hmm. You know, just read them really quickly, mm -hmm. and you find something that's important and it'll add on. So I spend about thirty minutes a day doing that, and uh, that's how I get my information. I find that I finish up watching a, my feed reader, my uh, my news, uh, instead of. When I finish Facebook, I feel a little bit angry and agitated. But uh, <laughs> doing the feed reader, I you're not after alone. The, <laughs> after the same amount of time, I feel like, oh, I've learned something new you right. know, each day. You know? right. So that's the RSS feeds. Now, there is uh, newsletters that uh, people do. And the best place to do that is go to Substack. Substack, okay. and, Substack. Uh, and they have. I'll put, many, I'll put many, this many. in the descriptions below, right? So everybody exactly. knows. Okay, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. Substack, and then uh, so that, and then there's organizations uh, that deal with this kind of topic. Jolt, Call, Sig. Okay. The call is computer assisted language learning, for example. Then there's IATEFL. They have a new Sig, uh, IT, information technology, or sorry. Okay. AI, oh, there we go. Okay. AI is the brand new one started, and then the 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 smallest level to look for is people. And for example, Louise Ohashi, 
right. uh, who is here in Tokyo. She writes a lot about uh, AI and, and mm -hmm. IT in language teaching and call, mm -hmm. uh, for example. And so I follow anything that she does right. uh, very closely. And uh, there's a, a couple of others uh, who I've been on panels with, but uh, I, I can put them down into uh, people to and what I'll do is actually there's a small file of my RSS feed that you can take all of the feeds that I get and put them into your reader. Oh, really? And okay. and and just and then you'll have all of those as a startup. You probably are not interested in most of those, so you mm -hmm. can delete all of those. But at least you have a starting point. Okay, so I'll add you. that to the uh, to the doobly doo. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my last question is this. Uh, as a language teacher and the, all the learners out there, how do we manage our excitement about AI? And also as teachers, how do we manage our fear? It seems a lot of people worry that AI is going to steal our jobs. How do you feel about that? What can we do? Yes, yes. I, I, mm, I feel that, again, as I said at the beginning, it's a tool. And yeah. It's a it's a new tool. It's a tool that we've not ever come across before. Mm -hmm. The G is for generative. That means it can make it can it generates uh, mm -hmm. new content. Mm -hmm. And we've never had something like this before that is so flexible and so uh, all encompassing. Uh, so it will be a huge change for mm -hmm. language teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the best way instead of to become afraid and run away uh to look at it closely and see how how you can take the tool and make it work for you to make you a better teacher hmm. uh, and i think that the face-to-face -face contact that a teacher offers will not uh that necessity will not go away uh it will become how do you say it much more expensive comparatively i think chat gpt is a good way to deliver uh content uh or uh tutoring in a way mm. that is a good supplementary for for most people but mm. can sometimes replace others um so that the teacher will be freed up in a way to be able to have uh and you say to be more like a coach, I think, right, is uh, to encourage them and point the students in the right direction, but not, how do you say it, not be a lockstep person. So we're moving, we have the, in, in IT, they say, uh, from the sage on the stage mm -hmm. to the guide on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're moving away even further than the guide on the side now. We're kind of like the coach uh, on the sidelines, right. uh, so that you do most of the work with them before and after their their specific learning. Mm. Uh, so I yeah, and I, and think, I think there's I mean the the AI is not very good at interacting with people. It doesn't understand emotions very well. Mm. Uh, it can fake a lot of stuff, but you it, you'll you will see in the next uh, year or two what uh, what it cannot do and you'll be mm. heartened to figure out that oh. yes i still have a place here <laughs> to deal so with what you're saying thing. is it seems like we're in this honeymoon phase right now with the technology we're embracing it and oh it can do so many things and then we're going to come down and say where well, it can't replace the human interaction and maybe the the problem solving the cultural nuances that a language teacher can explain and teach to the students i think right. that probably will continue and also the listening in real time of being yes. able to respond to a prompt from a teacher go ahead Ken. there there is what's called the gartner hype cycle and it's okay, a very please common explain. thing common thing for new technology every new technology that comes along for example self-driving cars hmm. lately is the best example about two or three years ago, everybody was saying, oh, it's going to be wonderful. We're getting them out in California and they're driving mm. by themselves. Mm. And that was, you know, the peak where everybody's so excited and interested and a little bit afraid. Nice. Then, then, you know, the cars start having accidents uh, and, and 
then it's called the trough of delusion i think mm. is the name where people get say oh this you know this new technology is really terrible it's going to be uh, awful for us and and then and then gradually it comes back up where it's not so you know over exuberant but mm. it's just you know people are are integrating it more into their lives and so i think ai uh, especially for language teaching will have that kind of th- a whiplash uh, i think probably later in this year uh mm-hmm. and and next year even too maybe the important thing though is it will change our teaching and we will not do the same things 10 years from now that mm-hmm. we're doing right now and you have to be prepared for that yeah okay that's actually really good advice okay kevin i want to thank you so much for you know, meeting with us today, it was some wonderful information you're able to uh, explain to our viewers. I, I hope the uh, students and the teachers really appreciate it. Um, any final parting words? Well, uh, have fun, actually. <laughs> uh, I think play play with this new technology. I, I For me, anyway, just try it out and, and be very bad at it. Just to, like it's kind of like language teaching. Mm. where you uh, uh, and just uh, where you're really bad at it at first and then gradually you get better. Mm. So. Yeah, that's actually really good advice. Okay. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Goodbye. All right.